So last weekend I was at a preview screening for The Lost City, and the whole audience seemed to be enjoying it, except for the guy sitting next to me. It was a packed house, so we were all in there tight, so I was scrunched in with this big dude sitting next to me who had his hoodie up and was sitting there with his arms crossed the whole time and did not move from this position. <laughs> I think I may have been sitting next to a dead man. I can't say I was necessarily looking forward to this going in. I've just seen a lot of mediocre adventure movies lately, whether it's Uncharted or Jungle Cruise, and this looked kind of on par with those. Then again, the last Channing Tatum movie I saw was Dog, which I surprisingly enjoyed quite a bit, even though I had seen a lot of not-so-great dog movies beforehand. And this one? Yeah, it's better than I thought it would be going in. Now the plot has to do with a romance novelist who is caught up in her own treasure-seeking adventure through the jungles and... Uh, yeah, okay, so it's romancing the stone. There's even a part where she's at a Q&A and the name of the event is Romancing the Page. And no, this movie isn't as well made, nor as clever, or as well written, and it definitely isn't as quotable as Romancing the Stone. Sometimes it was making it a little difficult because I could see a much better movie in my head, but there is still a lot of stuff here that works. The chemistry between the two leads is solid. They're funny together, they're sweet together, and it was very easy to root for them. I like how on the one hand she's burnt out by her books, while Channing Tatum, who plays the cover model for her novels, really likes her books and takes his gig as cover model seriously. He knows all about her books, seems to have read them, and is an expert on them, and is really protective and cares about his Dash character. Daniel Radcliffe is clearly having a lot of fun in the eccentric billionaire villain role, and the extended cameo from Brad Pitt is very, very, very funny. It was the best sequence in the movie. I could have used more of this, but it ended about like I thought it would. Like I said, it's not a great movie, but it is a good one. I did have some real laugh-out-loud moments, but it is hit or miss. A few points just turn into a ramble comedy where the improv starts taking over to where the joke is over, it's done, and no one is yelling cut. I don't like these ramble moments in comedies because you can tell when they go off script because suddenly their characters are talking way different than they do in the rest of the movie. It's got a lot of jokes where it'll cut to someone saying a one-liner and you can tell they probably shot a dozen different lines and this is the one they picked. And there's a ton of ADR jokes in it. You can see that no one is talking, or their faces are obscured, or they're walking away, and a joke is ADR'd into the movie, and rarely does it work. This happens a lot. It's very punched up. There's also a subplot with her publicist trying to get to where Sandra Bullock has been taken to, and it does tie in with the main plot by the end, but every time it cuts to this, it just kind of broke the flow and grinded things to a halt. I did get some very good laughs out of the movie, though. It's a good weekend date movie, or something you could see in the cheap seats or a matinee screening. I'll give it a B- minus for the many parts that do work, but I'm not as in love with it as a lot of other critics seem to be. Okay, and I know I said I'd review the outfit last weekend, but there was a problem with the movie's projector, so that delayed it a little bit. But I did see it, and we'll have that review coming up tomorrow, so we'll see you then.